there's a really big problem in fitness and lifting culture, which is that many of us love to talk about and look at and grow muscle, but very few of us seem to understand how exactly muscle functions. And no, I'm not talking about like deep physiology or any of that. I don't even understand that. But what I'm talking about more broadly is the following. We all seem to have this understanding or this idea rather that when we go into the gym, we are the captains of our ship, right? So we go into the gym, we contract muscles. I'm willing my muscles to contract and grow and then they get bigger and stronger. But is that actually how it works? I don't think so. Because oftentimes what happens is when people go to learn about muscle, let's say they're learning about the chest muscles, right? The pec major, and they read a list of functions in a textbook and they think they have this understanding. Oh, I understand this muscle, I know what it does. But that's only part of the story. It's an important part of the story, but it leads still to a lot of confusion. Why? Well, because when we go into the gym, we're lifting weights and lifting weights is how we grow bigger muscles and how we get stronger. And so when we think about muscle function solely as this thing that we are willing ourselves to perform, like I am again steering the ship of this muscle contraction thing, we're missing a big, big, big part of the picture. And that big thing we're missing is just a conceptualization of force and of physics more broadly, right? Because when we go into the gym and we contract muscles, muscles essentially just create rotation around joints. This is known as torque. And so when the biceps contracts, it moves the elbow. Well, how does it move the elbow? It basically pulls up on the radius bone that you see right there. The radius bone starts to pivot and then hopefully you perform the curl, right? But how do our muscles contract? Do we consciously ask ourselves like, hey, muscle, can you uh, uh, perform this action and this motion? No, they respond. And so when you go to do a bench press, do you have to ask your chest muscles to contract? No, you just grab a bar, start lowering the bar, and your chest is there, or at least hopefully there, to respond, right? And the same is true of any other exercise. If you're doing a triceps pushdown, you don't have to ask your triceps to contribute to the motion. You just grab the cable, you start bending and straightening your elbow, and voila, the right thing happens. So muscles ultimately contract based on two things, position, where are your bones, where's your body, and force, and more specifically, a force's direction, right? Because if you look at these two exercises, what is the difference between these two exercises? Many of you see these as, oh, biceps, triceps, right? But ultimately, both of these exercises is just someone bending their elbow, bending and straightening their elbow, right? And so the difference is that in the triceps exercise, the resistance is pulling up. And in the biceps exercise, the other elbow flexor exercise, the resistance is pulling down, right? So muscle contraction is not necessarily just this thing that we attempt to control. It's our body's, our brain's response to the external world, to the external scenario. Now, some of you might think that this is super obvious and some of you may be asking like, why does this even matter? Well, it matters a lot because when an exercise isn't going well, you can easily recognize that you, as in your body, is not the problem. Right? How you set up the forces of an exercise and how you position your body though is. So this is great news. Why is this great news? Well, because you don't actually, when you understand this stuff, have to guess about anything. You can remove the guesswork by taking a sort of outside the body external physics perspective. And because physics are essentially synonymous with facts at this point in our understanding, I don't have to ask myself whether or not my middle delts are contracting when I perform a lateral raise. I don't have to ask myself whether or not my lats are contracting when I do a pull down motion. So when you understand the external demands of an exercise and how our internal response is governed by that external demand, you no longer have this very sad, unfortunate attitude when things don't go the way that you think that they should in an exercise. Why? Well, because when you assume this perspective of muscles as responders and you don't assume the perspective of you are this person who is steering the ship, all you really have to do is just change the way that you're setting up the physics of the exercise. So the next time that you're in the gym and an exercise isn't going well, rather than thinking, I can't contract this muscle. Oh, poor me. I can't will this to happen. Think to yourself instead, how can I force, literally, how can I force this muscle to contract? How can I change the position of my body? How can I change the direction that the load of the exercise is pulling me 
So that something is different. This isn't to say that understanding muscle function doesn't matter, right? Of course it does, because on some level we need to understand where a muscle attaches and how it actually moves bones. But once we understand those fundamental things about muscles and just what their basic actions are, we should as quickly as possible try to understand all this stuff, not in isolation like we're reading a textbook, but in every context of every exercise. So rather than thinking, for instance, of your chest as a muscle that moves your arm from here to here, you need to think about your chest as something that responds to a force that is trying to move your arm in the opposite direction. Rather than thinking of a dumbbell curl as an exercise where you're moving your forearm from here to here, you should try to think about that exercise as one where the resistance is trying to straighten your elbow. Rather than thinking that a triceps extension is something where you are consciously mind muscle connectioning your way into success, you should think about a triceps extension as an exercise where your elbow is being bent by the external load and the external resistance. And trust me, this perspective is the most freeing thing ever because no longer do exercises exist as these things that are like very rigid, fixed structures, but really everything just exists on a spectrum of how you relate to the physics around you. And this opens up an entire new world of possibilities for exercise because rather than thinking in terms of names of exercises, you can just look at an exercise for what the forces are in that exercise and then you can reverse engineer what's happening so that you're never confused about what's working or what's not working or why something isn't doing what you think it should do. And although understanding this stuff is by no means super simple or super easy, the more that you assume this lens across the exercises that you do, the more that you'll start to see lifting and exercise as our body's response to the external load rather than just this thing that we ourselves in isolation are doing. So I hope this video offered you a different perspective. If it did, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think.